This is the AKK Alpha 10. It's an 80 channel, 5.8 gigahertz, 10 watt analog VTX. And yes, you did hear me right, a 10 watt VTX. And that's a huge amount of video transmitter power. But do we really need that much and just how well will it perform in a harsh penetration test? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Black channel. When I started out in FPV about 10 years ago, we were using 25 milliwatt VTXs like this one. They were initially a little bit ropey, but they eventually improved and soon 100 and 200 watt milliwatt VTXs appeared, which performed so much better and became very popular for FPV pilots using analog fat chart goggles, if you remember them. Then along came Immersion RC with a 600 milliwatt VTX and everyone FPV flying in buildings were very happy. And to be honest, these relatively low power VTXs were actually very good when they had clear and uninterrupted line of sight to the drone or the plane. So you could fly in for miles and see things really well in your goggles, particularly if you used high gain or directional antennas like these. So, Long range wing pilots had a good time of things. But you try flying an FPV drone a couple of hundred feet away in buildings or particularly around lots of big wet trees and all you could see in your goggles was a fuzzy old mess. Now this AKK Alpha 10 80 channel 5.8 gig 10 watt VTX, which is after all a massive amount of video transmit power, should perform very well under any of those conditions. And my initial plan was to strap this onto my trusty old Atom RC Dolphin Wing and see just how far I could fly and if I could still see things. But I'm not sure I could cope with the jeopardy of flying miles and miles away to find its limit and potentially crashing or losing it. And in the UK, that really is frowned upon by the CAA flying those sort of distances. And I don't think it really proves anything. Now, I'm pretty confident that with clear line of sight, you could probably fly this out into the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy and still have a great video signal in your goggles. Instead, I'm going to give this a tough penetration test and compare how it performs on 1 watt and its 10 watt settings. Basically, a real world test. But before I do that, let's have a closer look at this. Now you might be forgiven for thinking this looks like a tiny graphics card for a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or something. It's very nicely put together with a massive heatsink and a fan on this side and it all feels very solid. It's got 80 channels and all the usual bands and is power switchable using smart audio between 1, 3, 5, 7 and the full 10 watts. There's four mounting holes on here and you will need to space this off the frame or your plane to allow clearance for air to flow around the heatsink of the fan to keep it cool. And you can use between 12 and 28 volts to power this so that's realistically between 3 and 6S LiPos and the whole thing weighs 48 grams. On this end, there's an 8-pin connector and they supply a ready-wired cable for video, which are those connections there, and power. Now, you do get on each of the power legs two wires. So that's two for positive and two for ground. And the reason for that is that when it's on 10 watts, this is drawing 2.8 amps. If you're just using one of the pins on here, you'd exceed the current rating capacity, the current rating capacity of each pin. And they do make quite a big thing about that in this little manual that comes with it down here saying that both cables for each of the power legs must actually be soldered. And on the side here, there's a button to manually select the channel, band and power settings using various combinations of long and short press. And these settings are shown on a small but very bright LED display so you know what's going on. And if you use analog VTXs, this will all seem very familiar. It's also got a microphone down here and 
quite bizarrely, this supports pit mode. Quite Honestly, I don't see this ever being used for racing because it will just swamp out everyone else. And 25 milliwatts is usually the maximum power permitted in competitions. But I'm going to be using this AKK recommended 5.8 gigahertz, 4.5 dBi tube antenna on here for the test. And I've got another one here that I'm going to be putting on my sky zones. The price on this is $159.99 direct from the AKK website. And they have lower powered Alpha 4, 5 and 8 that are a little bit cheaper than this. So this is the rig that I'm going to use. I've mounted the Alpha 10 on some standoffs on this frame. So there's some airflow underneath. Got a Cadex Rattel camera at the front and I've got a 5 ampere hour LiPo and I'll be using my Sky Zones to record the video. I've got a route planned around a local park. There's a mixture of open space and then behind a very thick layer of trees down a path by the river. It's only about 500 meters clear line of sight and then it drops down behind a small hill and behind a thick layer of trees. And I'm gonna walk around and see where the video drops out on one watt and then I'll do it again on 10 watts to see how well this works on both in a pretty tough penetration test. My guess is it will drop out at the far end down behind the hill with both settings. But where will it reappear on the way back through the trees? That's the question. Okay, well, this is a first test with the rig. I'm running this on one watt. Uh, we're on race band channel five. And I've got Barry here helping me out just to check what's going on. And I'm going to walk all the way down there and around behind all those big, nasty, horrible trees and just see how well this performs on one watt. When we've done that, I'm going to do it on 10 watts and see what the difference is. All right, you ready? They're very nice trees, you know. I love them. <laughs> right, I'll see you in a minute. Nobody told me it was wet down here. <laughs> right, well, here we go. It's actually quite a nice day out here for doing this test. And I'm just doing my speed walk. I've sped up bits of this in places, so it's not quite so boring. Um, the image on this Canix Rattel it, it's actually pretty good. It's quite contrasty if I'm honest but we're not really here to look at the quality of the video image it's to do with how soon it breaks up I'm probably about 200 meters up here maybe 250 coming up towards the top of the hill and I'm expecting it to drop out about yeah there we go that's sort of mm, pretty unflyable there and coming back down along the path yeah there's no way I could have flown down here and that's why doing this test by walking is so much less stressful than trying to fly it. It's just starting to come back now. Mm, still marginal whether that's flyable. Cutting in and out. And that's probably about, let's see, 200 metres through the trees. So it's not bad on one watt. Uh, speed up again. And this is fine now. I could fly this. It's cutting in and out. This is all pretty good now. So at this point here, we're so close. We're only about sort of like 20 meters away down through the little path and hopefully back into, here we go. Back to base camp one for base station one. Right, time for take two. I've wound this up to 10 watts. We'll do the same thing again. Barry's gonna keep monitoring stuff and we'll see how it goes. See you in a minute. I'm not going to walk through that wet bit this time. <laughs> well, here we go again. Speed walking. Looks like Benny Hill. Avoiding all those swampy bits. And uh, walking back up the hill. It's a bit difficult to tell that it, this is actually a hill. And, um, yeah, the picture's still looking okay. Bit of speed walking again. That's the other thing is, I used to have... Uh, an Immersion RC antenna uh, power module, RF module, and I sold it. That's a bit stupid of me, but I wasn't using it, so just move it on. Somebody else wanted it. It would have been useful in this test, actually. Need quite a big attenuator, though. Anyway, let's get back up with it. 
So we're going back up the hill and let's see where this drops out. I'm expecting it to be about the same point as we come down the other side. And this is actually, this is a little bit better. So this is all perfectly flyable here. We're getting the breakups, breakups. And yeah, this is better, certainly, than running on one watt. But we're going to come down through the trees now. And yeah, this is marginal, marginal. And no, no way. I'm not going to be flying through there. You just see little ghosts of trees and images. And um, we're still quite a long way out. That's probably about 400, 450 metres, something like that, from where the sky zones are, recording this. So remember, the sky zones are back at base camp. And this is coming in a lot sooner. That's looking good, actually. Got some bars, and wow, that's just punched in very quickly. That's very good. We've got some slight break up. I don't know what those red bits are. We're doing speed up here. So that has come in um, a lot quicker than it did when we were running on one watt. There's a few little break ups and things, but this is all completely flyable. So 10 watts does perform a lot better through those trees and does appear a lot sooner. But you have to bear in mind, this is using a lot of battery power on 10 watts, 2.8 amps. And it's starting to get quite warm. I can feel it in my hand. I remember as I was walking around, the sides of the PCB were pretty warm. And coming back down to the turning in point, this is completely clear. This is absolutely perfect. Down through the trees again. There we go. We're back. <laughs> I'm getting quite warm now. Did that seem any better? What? Well, a long time, yes, and then you just went line, which you know, the black line going left to right, fuzziness. Right, where did I jump across before? Oh, what? Yuck, that wasn't exactly a scientific test, but I think it shows at 10 watts. This does perform better in a real-world penetration test than when it's set at 1 watt. And it's not a linear scale. 10 watts isn't 10 times better than 1 watt, because it's a log scale. But the signal definitely comes back a lot sooner. So the extra transmit power is making a difference. If you decide to use one of these on full power, then you'll have to factor in the 2.8 amps current drain on your battery. And despite the built-in fan, you'll need to have a good airflow around the heatsink to keep things cool. In my tests, it was getting pretty hot to the touch at 10 watts. I think this performed very well, but who's it for? Well, for drone and FPV pilots flying proximity, the extra power drain on your battery, even given the better penetration in buildings and particularly around trees, it's probably not worth it. If you fly long-range drones, and particularly wings, this is definitely worth looking at. I think it's better suited to wings where it's easier to have a larger battery, and generally you'll be flying further with much longer flight times. And if you do get one of these, you'll need to comply with the video transmitter licensing in your region. 10 watts will definitely need additional ham licensing in most regions. And links to the AKK website are in the video description, so you can check out the latest prices and the full specs. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, why not give me a thumbs up? And if you're new here, please subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can follow me there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.